Namaste, sentient beings. Citizen of Gotham, Monday, June 1st, 2015. Thanks for stopping by and tuning in. Hope all of you are doing well on this Monday. Start of the work week, another enslavement week. Anyway, blacklisted news. Does Jade Helm violate Posse Comitatus? Well, of course it does violate that. And if you're not sure what Posse Comitatus is, I will put the link in. It's basically, in short, saying it limits the government from using military personnel. Even the National Guard, which has a slight exception, well, actually, they do have an exception. The National Guard and the Coast Guard are the only two entities that actually can be used uh, in, in, uh, in, in not violation of Posse Comitatus, which is why they call National Guard in, uh, like uh, Baltimore did with the reptile mayor who lied and set up the whole thing. And then we find out later that they bust in thousands of agent provocateurs and then never paid them and all this stuff. It's amazing. It goes on and on, and people just still don't catch on to it. People are like, yeah, I gotta go to work and make my money because I gotta buy me a new phone and get laid on the weekend. People are deranged, and too many of the people in this world, unfortunately, especially pertaining to the United States, too many of them, probably 80 to 90 percent of them, are, are compliant with it. I guess I am too. I go and make my little nine dollars an hour in an after-school program that sucks, and I work with two stupid chicks that sit on their ass all day and don't do anything, or are half my age and think they know everything about the world. Uh, but I'm not trying to hurt anyone, and I wish I could do something and. If I could sacrifice my meaningless life, which is what it is, to have the world be in peace and happiness, I would do it. I just don't want to be tortured for it, but uh, I'm not imperative on this planet. And if I could snap my fingers and make a deal with someone, a god, or whatever, a deity, and saying, hey, you give me your life and the world will be happy, I would do it because I'm not serving much of a purpose here. But anyway, there's two PDFs about PDF, uh, two PDFs about PDF, two PDFs about Posse Comitatus, which will be in the uh, description box. Moving on with the articles. Obscured by John Stewart's well publicized mockery of Texans' reaction to Jade Helm 15. John Stewart's a piece of shit. Sellout like all of these entertainers are. They are all sellouts. U.S. Army's two month long, uh, two, yeah, two month long exercise across nine states scheduled to begin in July, which officially is when it begins, but it's already begun, and unofficially, I've heard it begins July, uh, June 15th. Is the fact that criticism may not at all be deranged droolings? Of course not. The Daily Show Stewart, the sellout that he is, the idiot that he is, made headlines earlier in May when he ridiculed Texas Governor Greg Abbott, ordering the State of Guard to monitor Jade Helm. The Queen Income News called Jade Helm critics lone star lunatics. But who are they? Are these more? Is there more to the story? As always, who, what, why has remained agnostic while asking questions. Now we provide a few initials, re -answer, uh, sorry, a few initial answers. More will undoubtedly come. Jade Helm will be conducted in the states of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, Mississippi, Florida, and Louisiana. One other state, Colorado, has dropped it off the list, and at least two other counties in Texas in response to the controversy. Yes, and also, what they don't list right there is all virtually all of these, especially Texas, and, and I think Colorado as well, and maybe even Utah, have been uh, deemed hostile states. And not to mention, there's no reason to be running these type of uh, drills, exercises, they call them, on homeland when you're trying to prepare for terrorists outside. So it's a clear violation of Posse Comitatus. It's a clear lie. I'm not saying July 15th there'll be martial law that day, but they're definitely preparing for it. And it might be a couple months later that it happens. I predict that they're waiting. Not waiting. Well, they're waiting and they're not waiting. They're waiting in the sense of the next false flag, but they're not waiting because there's going to be a false flag and the next one is either going to be one major one that just devastates everything or it's going to be two or three small ones that are going to accumulate to one devastating one if you get my drift. So, and that's when they'll implement martial law. And this is just practice. It's exercise for them in ways because they're practicing what they're going to be doing, which is going to people's homes in the way out of the morning, shooting people, exterminating people, taking away their guns, and also checking on uh, the food they have, their water supplies, so they can help ration them off and say you can only have this amount of water, you can only have this amount of food, and if you violate, you'll be shot. It's crazy. It's craziness that's about to come, and it's not years away. But, oh, it's 20 years. It's not 20 years away. Uh, our world will drastically change probably within the next year, if it even will be that long. It might be in the next six months. But anyway, I'm on crack. Criticisms of the exercise range from panic, extreme serenity scenarios such as in, uh, eminent martial law and mass arrest to more nuanced concerns, for example, that military exercise on this scale could desensitize civilian populations to martial law tactics and government. Of course, that is one other factor for this. The massive is exercise led by the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, USACOC, under Lieutenant General Charles T. Cleveland, interesting name, we'd love to do the gematria on that, would include conventional, unconventional warfare units from all service branches, including U.S. Army, Special Forces, U.S. Navy SEALs, U.S. 
Air Force Special Operations and USMC Marine Special Operations. Not to mention that they have the right, which they've said in it, I forgot the term they use, but basically they can use uh, other unidentified people such as mercenaries as well and foreign, uh, foreign uh, military personnel, which are mercenaries. According to Jade Helm 15, the official PowerPoint presentation, other participants' units are USMC Marine Expeditionary Units, the Army's 82nd Airborne, which are involved in every damn thing, at last but not least, civilian interagency par partners. Those are private uh, agencies such as Blackwater and um, whatever the other one was called back in 2001, or a couple of them. But anyway, the latter refuses to range, which are mercenaries. The latter refers to a range of domestic law enforcement agencies, including FBI, DEA, and Department of Homeland Security, DHS. Uh, one contingent, contingent special operations is of particular interest. Special operations units are highly trained elites that specialize, among other things, in assassinations and extractions on human targets. In 2013 article titled, Five Takeaways from the United States Special Ops Raids in Somalia and Libya, published by the Washington, D.C.-based defense trade journal DefenseOne.com anal analysis. He preys upon small multi-agency task force led by Joint Special Operations Command, JCOC, JSOC, excuse me, that target individual terrorists and insurgent leaders for depth or capture. That's also referring to probably Obama's assassination this December. Not going to digress. Infiltrating towns and cities. Jade Helm, presents the present presenter, sorry, has stated the troops will infiltrate towns and cities and rove among the civilian population, both in uniform and in civilian clothes. That also means, besides spying on people in civilian clothes, they will also be agent provocateurs, which people don't seem to catch on at all. And all of these stupid riots that are all set up, most of it is peaceful protest, because that's what a protest is. It's usually peaceful. You're just talking, carrying signs, and babbling and trying to make a change, which most of the time doesn't happen, but you have these agent provocateurs that come in and will dress like civilians and start shit, and then, then you have now the ones that are all drawn out, I mean, more, uh, dressed out in black and hiding their faces and all that, because most of them are CIA agents, some of them are Nazis, like in Baltimore, I, feel, I, I think they have some neocons there, but most of them, if not all, are CIA agents, and uh, some of them might be families of CIA agents where they're trying to prove themselves to get in or join a club or whatever. And so it's all planted. So they're going to have these military special op people out of uniform pretending to be civilians who are going to cause bullshit because they're going to start shit. And that'll get everyone into it. And all they have to do is attack one person. And then if a bunch of people jump in, then the whole city or state will be on lockdown because of that. And the person who started shit will run away and get a medal and get promoted and laugh his ass all the way to the bank. Roy Board, chief deputy of the Victoria County Sheriff's Office, told the Houston Chronicle, they're going to set up cells and pe people of people rather, and test how well they're able to move around without getting noticed in the community. They're testing their abilities basically to blend in with the local environment and not stand out and blow their cover. Well, wouldn't it be great if people actually paid attention, or if there was like uh, quote unquote like little militias, and I say like meaning as a comparative, where people banded together and said we're going to look for these pieces of shit, and when we find them, we're going to expose them, because that would eliminate them putting some, these these undercover ops the CIA ops in as civilians pretending to be civilians. If they get pointed out, they will run and hide because they will be exposed and that will stop it. But most people won't band together, but that's what people should be doing. Yeah, gathering together, trying to gain information, getting their little, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't call faction, but their little groups together where their job is to walk around and point out these people. When you see someone, you go, hey, he's, a, he's an agent, he's an agent, and then watch the person run away. Because if they're not an agent, they're not going to run away. If they're an agent, they're going to run away, they're going to get mad, they're going to try to do a fist fight. And also, if you go up to them and pull the shirt up and they have a little badge or gun on them, which I'm sure most of these are going to be carrying some type of ID on them, on, on the person. They might not be having a weapon because that'll be a little too obvious, but somewhere on their person, they're probably going to have some type of weapon. Not to mention, as often, Officers, like meaning uh, police officers, especially in New York City, they have colors of the day when they work undercover so they don't get shot, which all precincts are supposed to know, whether it's green, orange, yellow, pink, brown, whatever color it is, or they'll also have key phrases so that alert other officers that, hey, this is another officer, they're undercover, don't shoot this person. And they still sometimes get shot, so there'll be key words and key colors that they will use, but that should be exposed as I just digressed about. Elaborating further, Thomas Mead, the contractor hired by USACSOC, said in a presentation to Big Spring, Texas City Council in March that special forces operators as special force ops soldiers are called, will enlist local role players as informants. Mead told the city council that operators will be looking for someone who gives a little nugget of information for them to build an intelligent picture. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. They're trying to profile people, and that's discriminatory by nature. If these kinds of activities uh, activities resemble counterinsurgency that set Jade Helm apart from the previous exercises that 
the army cites is similar to Jade Helm. This argument hinges on what is meant by similar. The scripts in those previous exercises called for special ops operators to assist local insurgents or freedom fighters in resisting tyrannical authorities. In Jade Helm, the U.S. operators will apparently be working to suppress any insurgency. This will involve activities more in keeping with law enforcement, such as information gathering from locals moving about undercover in communities and assaults on selected targets. Residents have been told to expect increased aircraft in the area at night. Well, isn't that great? That's also shock and all that's going to be bothering people. It's just getting them used to what's going to come. Overall, totalitarian state under martial law, under military, in the guise of security. Critics of Jade Helm note that the military is not intended nor designed to function as law enforcement body and that soldiers are not trained to evaluate the legal nuances of probable cause or to safeguard the rights of civilian detainees. That's true, but cops don't give a shit about that either. So again, it is a violation of posse comitatus. Is this something new? Stewart and other influential media figures, the piece of shit that he is, has assured the public there's no basis for the concern because similar exercises have been conducted for years without any undue harm. That's a lie. And I hope that when it does go into effect, which I'm not hoping it does, what I'm saying is when it does go into effect, I hope they break down his door and shoot, put a gun up his asshole and blow his little brains out. Hope he's the first person to get screwed over so he can eat his words. And then if he gets put in a tournament camp, if I ever see him, I'm going to knock the living shit out of him. But anyway, one exercise just recently concluded in May took place in Richland, some South Carolina in it. The third special forces group out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, trained with Richland County deputies for two weeks in late night and pre-dawn exercises, WLTX. 19 News relayed the Sheriff's Department message that residents should not be alarmed at hearing ordinance being set off. Or shots being fired. Yeah, don't be alarmed that we're going to be murdering your civilians, your fellow civilians. It's crazy. They're going to use smoke bombs. They're going to be going in the wee hours the morning doing raids, SWAT style, and they will be carrying live ammo and shooting people that resist or who grab their guns. And they do not have any worry about that. They actually, most of these people are, have a hard on for that. They're hoping that happens. Like most of these crazed cops, these psychopath cops, they get actually excited almost to a sexual extent about what they're doing. Sickness. Given the South Carolina exercise past virtually unknown, it's why is Jay Helm setting off so many alarm bells? It's, it's business as usual, a practice for the martial law. As Jade Helm critics contend, what makes Jade Helm different from previous military exercise carried out on U.S. soil? Well, there weren't that many exercises, if any, that I can remember that were carried on U.S. soil, so I don't know what they're referring to. This is where the information is flying fast and furious. In his presentation in Big Springs, USACOSOC contractor Meade acknowledged that the exercise is actually the first of its kind, which is what I just said, so I don't know what they're referring to about other exercises on, on Human, uh, uh, United States soil. He told the audience that the closest he would come to identifying an operation somewhat resembling Jade Helm, Jade Helm is the Army much smaller annual exercise known as Robin Sage. In Robin Sage, the People Republic of Pineland, it's a fictitious county spawning, spanning 15 counties in North Carolina where U.S. Special Forces soldiers seek out insurgents played by actors who, for the purpose of exercise, are treated at, as the U.S. backed freedom fighters. Special Forces set up base camps in these fighters with the goal of liberating Pineland as such. Robin Sage is proactive insurgent exercise. Jade Helm seems to be precisely the opposite of counter insurgent exercise. Good point by the writer. Despite this difference, Robin Sage offers does offer a stark illustration of what can go wrong when enemies are set loose in a civilian countryside. In 2002, one soldier was killed, another wounded, when a local police officer opened fire on them, not knowing they were part of Robin Sage's exercise. Under the pretext of defending a bedrock principle of America law since the Civil War, and even prior, has been the clear prohibition against the use of federal troops, and opposed. Uh, to National Guard operating under the authority of various states for domestic law enforcement. This dates back to Posse Comitatus Act, which in turn is grounded in the following father's warning against standing cities, uh, standing armies. Let's see, they have it. What they did is just uh, cool. All right, that'll be in the description box as well. The relevant text of Posse Comitatus, which roughly means deputized force, uh, reads as amended in 1956, whoever except in cases and under circumstances expressly authorized by the Constitution or Act of Congress willfully uses any part of the arm, Army or of the Air Force as po posse comitatus or otherwise as execute laws shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than two years or both. Posse, posse comitatus does not preclude the military from conducting exercise on civil soil, which as detractors of paranoid Texans point out take place all the time. The law does, however, prohibit the U.S. military from engaging in direct law enforcement activities. This would certainly include the capture of U.S. soil of U.S. citizens suspected of breaking the law in any way, shape, or form. Interestingly, uh, as an institution, the United States military seems to agree with and abide by the spirit of Posse Comitatus in 2001 paper for the School of Advanced Military Studies at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, to Posse Comitatus in 19th century law, worthy of review for the future. The author reads, the desire to separate the military from policing, policing sorry, activities within the U.S. can be traced back 
traced to the very origins of the Republic itself. The perception is that a standing military force attempting to enforce civil law allows for despots to retain power by force of arms rather than by consent of the governed. Of course, the author of U.S. Army Major concludes that there are still today many good and valid reasons behind the Posse Comitatus Act and referring to the origins of the Republic. The Major may have had in mind James Madison, a founding father, uh, vociferously distrustful of large standing armies. Madison wrote, throughout all of Europe, the armies kept up the, under the pretext of defending have enslaved the people. In Jade Helm 15, a litmus test of success will be how well special force operators move about within civilian populations without being noticed, or at least calling too much attention to themselves. If you're able to no notice our guys, we're probably doing something wrong. Me, the U.S. contractor, told the big spring. I saw this guy when he did that interview. He's like a 300 pounds, six foot five, six foot seven. A reptile. He's enormous. Anyway, in the Big Spring City Council meeting, residents were told to expect activity to occur between 11 p.m. and 4 p.m. during the question and answer period to, to a packed house. An assistant to me revealed we come to doing the hit and extracting. Time on the ground may be 15 20 minutes exposure, then that's it. The word extracting is critical to special operations parlance. Extracting a high value target can mean to take the targeted person away from the, his or her home or location to say willing or unwillingly. Here's how Wikipedia describes military extraction, especially in its kidnapping of military uh, or intelligence forces. How is it real? Is how real is real to critics? Uh, one of the most disturbing aspects of exercise is USA's uh, USA SOCs. Uh, sorry, yeah, SOCs uh, openly stated des desire to conduct conduct the exercise in a realistic environment. In recent years, humans humans. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent creating realistic facsimiles to foreign towns and even small cities on military bases in the United States. The pro purpose of this program is to give soldiers a taste of what they might occur during urban warfare operation overseas. Well, then they shouldn't be practicing it here, right? A new $90 million, only $90 million training center in North Virginia uh, boasts the stores, gas station, school, soccer field, church, mosque, tunnels, and subway platforms. So what the hell are they doing training on anywhere else, right? But what might be the military's mean by realistic environment in the context of Jade Helm in terms of culture and physical setting. Uh, only English-speaking American resembles English-speaking America as concerned residents of one of the, f the towns affect small towns, uh, one of the affected small towns in Texas told a newspaper, what place looks like this except this. Put another way, special ops were to prowl the coffee shops in North Korea, Ukraine, or Tehran, Tehran, questioning locals for information they would be rounded up within an hour or so, as John Stewart might have asked if he had looked a little deeper into Jade Helm's scenario. Who is America fixing to invade? Canada? <laughs> Are Texans crazy? Texas uh, ret ret reticence is uh, surprising. The state would seem to be the last place in the U.S. United States to emerge as the center of resistance to Jade Helm. Its gun-friendly culture is hardly averse to American militarism. The state has one of the highest concentrations of military personnel in the nation. Uniforms are everywhere. That's one of the reasons why they're doing this. In the airports and in the towns, the state hosts two of the largest military bases in the United States, Fort Hood and Fort Bliss in Texas. Everyone knows someone in the Army. Those who mock the governor's decision ordering the Texas state Guard and mon to monitor Jade Helm would no doubt question the relevance of Madison's warning about standing armies, the ca uh, cautionary language of the Posse Comitatus Act, particularly in the era of endless war on terrorism. But the very definition of tyranny, or tyranny rather, is the deployment of the army intended only for foreign wars against its own people, and if Jade Helm is not a deployment but an exercise, then critics legitimately ask, what is an exercise ex for except to prepare for some realistic eventuality, which arises even more uncomfortable question and should practicing for something illegal in itself be illegal so there's the act the article goes on more I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it'll be another 20 minutes but anyway uh, you just have to read the last third of the article if you're still paying attention the description I mean the links will be in the description box about posse comitatus crazy stuff we should not be allowing it but we are anyway be well stay balanced namaste